So let's start with what is sustainability in construction? Now I'm going to read this definition. I'm not going to paraphrase it so that you get it down. Boom. The practice of designing, constructing, and maintaining buildings in a way that minimize an environmental impact, conserve resources, and ensure economic and long-term viability. Now I'll tell you what, with the advent of AI, which we're seeing everywhere, we're gonna be able to test whether the buildings we're building, what their impact will be in 10, 20, and 30 years from now with actual data points. This is gonna be becoming more and more important. But I think what's important for us here today is what is sustainability in the real world as it pertains to construction and development in New York? What are the actual things that are in this sustainability narrative and how does that impact the buildings in these urban environments like NYC? We got to create energy efficiencies. One of them, a green roof. What's a green roof? Planting on a roof. It's self-explanatory, but what is it really? You have to build up your roof with some type of sustainable plantings, dirt, grass, so that something could grow, right? So it's an actual buildup on the rooftop. So what are the positives? Obviously, we're creating more oxygen. How about this? When it rains, our ability to understand where that water is gonna go, our ability in New York City or any urban environment to deal with that water and then put it into our sewage system is what is required of every developer. But imagine now you're reducing the amount of water going into our system because it's being absorbed by the very plants that you had just planted on that green roof. Solar panels. Let's absorb some of the sun's energy, put it back into the grid, use it in our buildings, reduce our energy consumption. What else? LED lighting. Lighting emitting diode. Do you think I memorized that? No. I looked it up, okay? It's using less energy energy, all of these themes, right? It seems to be is how can we reduce the amount of energy we're already consuming? And I think what's fascinating about these things, it's not a hundred percent change. There's no new tech that came out that changes the game. It's little changes. What about triple glazed windows? What do you know about windows? Do you know that certain windows have an air gap in them? In that air gap is an actual gas that can mitigate sound and energy passing through it like argon. So increasing these types of windows, whether the thickness and the way that energy passes through it is another way of creating an efficiency and sustainability. All right. And the last one that I, for this is passive house design. The concept basically is, can you create a building that's just so tight where the insulation is tight that you can monitor and know where you're losing heat and you're actually gaining heat, losing it, gaining cold, losing cold. It's a passive house design where everything is matched perfectly so that you don't lose energy or gain energy in the wrong places. It's just like being conscious of actually how you're building it. I wanna just kind of give you like a major example of understanding sustainability in New York City that everyone will understand. When you go into an old building, you usually have a boiler, a single pipe system going to a steam radiator. It's like iconic in New York, right? And when I grew up in Park Slope, when you got near those steam radiators, it was hot right? When you went to the other side of the house, you saw the steam radiator and it was cold. That was because there was nothing smart about that system. The closer you were to the boiler on that single loop, the hotter that fixture would be. By the time you got to the end of the loop, the colder it would be. So in some of these buildings, some people are screaming it's too hot. Some people are screaming it's too cold. Well, the technologies and sustainability are basically then distributing that evenly. So you're not wasting energy in order for some place to be too hot and some place to be too cold. Makes perfect perfect sense, right? Not a huge innovation, but that is a part of sustainability. And last but not least is the industry getting the knowledge and information as to what they need to do so that they can pre-plan their projects without a moving target in legislation to incorporate whether it's air quality, whether it's green building materials, and know that they are actually going to have a positive impact on society when it comes to sustainability. So there's a whole body of knowledge and education that's required into bite sizes, because remember, we as builders and developers are the doers of the universe. We're not the innovators. So it's how you get them to understand the impact on an economic one, on what they're actually doing for sustainability, so that they're willing to execute on those plans and know that what they've done is actually a net benefit. So stay tuned, pay attention to how sustainability will change because it's coming.